Uh, good day dear chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a very interesting and dramatic game played at 1999 Ukrainian Championship. This game was played between two Ukrainian chess grandmasters. On the white side is Stanislav Savchenko and his opponent is Vladimir Savon. Savchenko played for Ukraine in the chess Olympiads of 1996 and 1998 and when it comes to Savon, he competed in the Soviet Chess Championships uh, 11 times, from 1961 to the last championship in 1991. His best result was his first place in the 1971 USSR Championship with an undefeated 25 points out of 21 rounds. Uh, with this being said, now we can go through the game. Uh, Savchenko opened up with d4, to which Savon answered with knight f6 c4 d6, knight c3 e5. Blick is choosing the so-called old Indian defense, uh, this is known as Ukrainian variation, and seems like that Black is happy with an early exchange of queens, but white didn't capture on e5, instead developed the kingside knight provoking e4. There comes knight g5 targeting the central e pawn and queen e7 black, it, black is protecting it but is doing it at the cost of blocking the dark squared bishop's diagonal usually in old indian defense uh, black is developing the bishop on e7 rather than fianchettoing which is considered to be a little bit passive approach because on the long diagonal the bishop really feels very strong f3 meanwhile white wants to get rid of this powerful wedge it takes f3, g takes f3, g6, knight h3. Uh, e4 is also playable. In our game we have knight h3, bishop g7, e4, and an exchange on h3 followed. Knight takes e4. Well, black is going for a tricky combination, but turns out that Vladimir Savon failed to calculate up to the end. Uh, the combination allows Black to win two pawns, but that's not good. A better move was playing knight h5, not allowing white to pin the knight, opening up the queen's diagonal. In future, this can be very useful when organizing a kingside attack and preparing castling kingside. But in our game, we have knight takes e4. White accepted the piece sacrifice, and there comes queen h4 check. Knight f2, protecting the bishop as well, and there followed bishop takes d4. Savon is playing very aggressively, and it may seem that he is just doing great, but just have a look what's going to happen on the board. Okay, there comes bishop takes f2, so black is also removing a defender in order to win a piece. But instead of recapturing white played king g2, this is a very strong move. Uh, and now white wants to win back the piece. Black played bishop d4, but the storm is not over. Now it's white who is going to counterattack. Uh, by the way, let me tell you that if you move your bishop all the way back up to, I don't know, c5 or b6, then can you find the winning line for white? Ready? Turns out that this queen one check is winning. If here, then rook takes e1 and there are no safe squares for black king. If here, then uh, bishop g5 check is coming. And in both cases, wherever you put your king, this bishop is jumping into the game and white is winning. That's why after king g2, black played bishop d4. And in this case, a move like queen one check won't work because after an exchange on e1, uh, black can, can just play king d8 and we have a bishop on the long diagonal, this check can be successfully uh, neutralized. So that's why in our game after bishop d4, white played rook e1 check, king f8. Turns out that later this position also occurred in a game played between Alexander Maiseyenko and Manuel Lopez Martinez in 2005. In that game, black played king d8, but even so, black lost very quickly. There followed rook e4, queen f2 check, king h1, bishop f6, bishop e3, and yes, very quickly white managed to prevail. A few more moves were 
made and then black resigned. This is how that game ended. But now let's not deviate too much from our main game. Here we have king f8 and now a question arises how should white proceed. Please pause the video and try to find the winning line for white. Well, ready? Uh, it turns out that there is a back rank weakness and Slavchenko of course saw it. He saw it and he played queen takes d4. How do you like this beauty guys? All black could do was to recapture and there followed bishop h6 check. Queen g7 and there came another devastating blow. Rook e8 check. King takes e8, bishop takes g7, and black resigned. Now, if, for example, you move your rook, then rook e1 check is coming, and your king is just getting checkmated, guys, this is crazy. And in case of, I don't know, f6, white can just win this rook. And you can't even trap this bishop, you know, this time bishop c8 can follow. This is a total destruction, guys, that's why after... Bishop takes g7, black resigned. So, maybe we should take a look at that combination once again. Everything started with knight takes e4. Black hurried too much with his aggressive intentions. Uh, actually managed to win two pawns, but white's counterattack followed. And in a dashing style, it was white who managed to win the game. Queen takes d4. Yeah, just a marvelous move, and then rook e8, and this is how white prevailed. Thanks for watching, feel free to share this game with your friends as well, I'm sure you liked it a lot, and in the end a chess puzzle, where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.